Well, 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 grace and peace, saints. How wonderful it is to gather together again with the saints. Have you been working? I mean, no matter how high you were on Sunday and how full you were on Sunday, some of that's been used up. And that's why we gather together midweek to be re-energized re and refueled and refocused. My goodness, it is so good to see you all on the call. I want you to know there's a certain pattern that I like to follow. There are many patterns of prayer. Um, you can follow the Acts pattern of prayer. Um, you know, you can follow the, the, the pattern of prayer some in the Book of Common Prayer, the liturgical way. Um, this, this way of praying has always been key to me. You begin with thanking and praising God. Before you ask him for anything, you got to let him know that you acknowledge who he is. And that after we have acknowledged who he is and offer the sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. He kept us Monday, kept us Tuesday, kept us today. And we want to thank him. I, I don't have time to do a testimony service, but I know there's some people who are connected to this call today, tonight, who, who have experienced God in a real way this week and we thank him and we praise him and so now i want to go i want to go into a time of prayer and there's some things i want to pray for tonight um i want us to pray i want to pray for you for focus i am i am i am being pushed by god to remind you that while we have great potential and we have great purpose it cannot be accomplished without great focus. And so in a, a few minutes, I'm going to, I'm going to pray. I want you to pray too. I'm going to keep you muted, but I want you to pray as I am praying and praying first for yourself and then for people that you know and love for focus. Why? C Colossians chapter three, verse one through three says, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And his verse, set your affection on the things above and not on the things of the earth. Set your affection, focus your mind. Focus your mind on godly things, on heavenly things, on kingdom things. And, and tonight I wanna pray for our kingdom focus. I know we have other things going on in our lives and, and, and I know that there are things that you need God to do, but I want you to trust me as your pastor. And, tell, and understand that we are praying for focus, for kingdom focus. And while I'm praying and you can hear me, I want you to pray along with me. Come on, let's do it now. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I speak to everyone who's connected tonight on this call. I decree, oh God, that we are, are kingdom minded and kingdom focused. That Father, in, with all the other things we have going on in our lives, with all of the other things that are pulling on us on the left and on the right, we are determined to be kingdom focused. Lord, I pray for everyone, even as I'm looking at the saints that are gathered together tonight, I am praying kingdom focus. Do not allow anything to get our focus off of the kingdom, off of the things that we are to do in the kingdom, off of the calling you've given to us in the kingdom. Father, we thank you that we are kingdom minded, that we have a kingdom mindset, that we're setting our affections, the things that are important to us, we're setting it on the things above and not on the things beneath. We thank you, oh God, that we are purposefully mindful of the fact that we are citizens of the kingdom. Mm. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. And because we are citizens of the kingdom, we are kingdom minded. We are kingdom focused. We're looking at the things above, understanding, oh God, that, that, that the things on the earth, the things that we need, you are our God and your word assures us that my God, our God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. So if we set our affections on kingdom things, you will take care of our earthly things. My God, I want to say that again. If we will set our affection on kingdom things, 
you will take care of our earthly things. Lord, many of us on this call tonight, we have walked with you a long time, and we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that even when times are hard, and even when things don't look like they're going to work out, that God, you always make Mm, always make a way. And so, Lord, I pray even now that the people that are connected on this call who have taken the time to connect with me, Lord, we are kingdom minded, that we are looking and setting our affections on the things above. We're not going to be pulled down by the by the, 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 the mundanities of life. We are not going to be pulled down by the drudgery of life. We're going to keep our eyes. I will look up unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. I am going to keep my eyes focused on the things of God and the things of the kingdom and the things that are above and allow the Lord to take care of my regular needs, knowing that if I if I give him my best, I can't outdo God. Knowing that if I give him my best, God is able to do more than we could even think or imagine. Lord, I praise you and bless your name because, Lord, you alone can do it. You alone can do it. You alone can do it. And we thank you for it. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. Mm, in the name of the Lord Jesus. So, Lord, again, I thank you for kingdom focus for kingdom mindset, for kingdom mind that, that is, is looking to what else we can do to advance the kingdom of God. Lord, we praise and magnify you for kingdom focus. And one other thing I want to pray for, two other things. I want to pray for faith. I want to pray for your faith. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we all know it. It says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going to say it again. We walk by faith and not by sight. And I, and I want to pray for, for, for our walk. Now, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Lean in and listen. I, I'm praying, and I want you to pray along with me, for the, for the courage to step out in faith and not back up in, per, in fear. Oh, Lord. Somebody said that. I typed that out on the chat. Somebody's put that on, on Twitter or whatever, whatever y'all do. I, I'll say it again that we step out in faith and not back up in fear. The enemy sends fear, oh my goodness, to cause us to back up. But look, look at me, lean and listen, you ain't backing up. You are, you are not going to back up. You are not, you have too much faith in you. God has already done it. And so my, my quote to you is step out in faith and not back up in fear. Step out in faith and not back up in fear because God is with you. Hey, 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 let me tell you something that you know. God has been on your side from the beginning. <laughs> God has been with you through the vicissitudes of life, through the ups and downs of life, through the pains, through the struggle, through the tears. God has been with you. And that's why we keep putting one foot in front of the other. We walk by faith and not by sight. And I'm going to pray because I want you, I want you for where God is taking us as we continue to, as becoming a better you, for where God is taking us, you have to have the, the, the determination. I'm going to step out in faith and not back up in fear. Say that with me. I'm going to step out in faith and not back up in fear. Say it with me again. I'm going to step out in faith and not back up in fear because God wants to do great things for you and faith is how you get the blessings of God. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray now for courage and for faith. <laughs> I thank you, oh God, that we are stepping out in faith and not backing up in fear. Whatever we're facing, whatever we're facing tonight, whatever we're facing this week, whatever we're facing this month, I thank you, oh God, that we are strong in faith. <laughs> we are strong in in faith, and we refuse to back up in fear. Fear, you have no place. You have no place other than to remind us that we walk by faith and not by sight. You, you have no place with us because we know that the God that we serve, who has been so good for so long, ha! He's been so good for so long, 
so good for so long. And we pray even now that, that, that no matter what we're facing, what the current crisis is, because we've had past crises uh, we, and we're going to have future crises. But whatever the current crisis is now, we thank you. I speak over your people that they're going to step out in faith and not back up in fear. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, I release faith. I release faith right now. I decree faith into your spirit. I decree faith into your mind. I decree faith into your actions. I decree faith as your pastor. I decree faith. You are stepping out in faith and not, uh, not backing up in fear. The hand of the Lord is with you. He's pulling you when you need to be pulled. He's pushing you when you need to be pushed. And he's carrying you when you need to be carried. And so because of that, we thank you, Lord. We all, we know you're working, you're working, you're working. And it is our faith, our faith mixed with your power brings forth amazing results. I'm going to say that one more time. Our faith mixed with your power brings forth amazing results. And so, Father, we thank you. And we praise you. And then lastly, Lord, I pray for souls. Don't ever want to not pray for souls. Father, make us instruments of evangelism. That, oh God, we are able to, to, to touch people and we are able to connect with them. There are many people that we know and love who need you. They need to be saved. They need to have their lives turn from, from wickedness to holiness, from darkness to light. And so even now, oh God, I am praying for, for, for those of us who, who, who maybe have not reached out to anyone in a long time. But Lord, I'm praying that all of us, all of us on this call, all of us on this church will have the joy of leading a soul to Christ, leading a soul, inviting someone to come to church. I thank you, God, that this church is exploding with new souls, new souls. We release it now in Jesus' name, if you believe it, shout amen and put your hands together. Let me see you clap. Let me see you clapping. Let me see you clapping. Hallelujah. 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 Those that I don't see a picture, I'm believing by faith that you're clapping. I'm believing by faith that you're clapping. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Woo! Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Okay. I'm on fire tonight. I feel God. I want to go back to what we talked about last week. Uh, last week, uh, I, 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 I dealt with the issue of don't be distracted. Somebody say, don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Don't be, don't be distracted. Don't, no, no matter what's going on in your life, don't be distracted. Last week, uh, we, we talked about it out of, out of the book of, of Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 6. We talked about it where, where, where Moses, in his, in his dealing with the children of Israel, um, he says to them, because uh, he wants them to understand that that no 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 matter no matter what no matter what no matter what he wants you to understand that that you cannot be distracted. Somebody say no distraction, no distraction, no distraction. Deuteronomy eleven sixteen. He says, take heed to yourself that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. I dealt with that last week. I'm not going to deal with that text again. But I, I still feel the Lord pushing me when it comes to the idea of making sure that you that, that, that you are not distracted. So go with me in, in, in your Bibles. Get, get your Bibles. Galatians chapter 6. And I'm just going to kind of read through it. I want to get to one verse in particular. But, but, but I want to I get to, I just want to read through it because it's a phenomenal chapter. Um, uh, Galatians chapter 6. When you have a say, man, I'm going to discipline myself and not, and not try to exegete the passage. I just want to read it in your hearing. Galatians chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. Brethren, a man be overtaken in a fault. Ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Moving on. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. I have a pause right there. Okay. In, in another place, portion of scripture, Paul says, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. It, it's, 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 a, it's a throwback to Micah, which says, uh, what does the Lord desire thee but to walk humbly before the Lord? The, the call of humility. Humble yourself, Peter said, 
in under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So, so verse three of, of Galatians six says, uh, for if a man think himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceiveth himself. And we cannot be deceived because the deception is nothing more than a distraction. But I'm going to move on. Verse four. But let every man, here it is, here it is, prove his own work or, or examine his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not another. Verse five. For every man shall bear his own burdens. I want to pause there for a moment. Because because people don't 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 understand the the fullness of scripture. Sometimes don't understand how both things can be said that are, that are paradoxical but are true. In verse two, look at verse two. He says, "Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ." And in verse five, he says, "For every man shall bear his own burden." Now, please understand. In 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 verse two. He's talking about someone who is weak, who has messed up, someone who didn't get it right. He's saying when it comes to those kind of things, we are to help each other, bear each other burdens. We are, we are to, 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 to be there for a brother. If they fall, pick them up, dust them off, let them put them back in, in, in the field. That, that's what he's talking about in verse 2, that we are to bear each other's burdens when it comes to fault or weakness or or somebody who's messed up. Why? Because we have all messed up. I'm holding up both my hands and lifting my leg. You can't see it. But in verse in verse five, he's when he says, every man shall bear his own burden, there he's talking about that you ought to be doing for yourself, proving your own work. This has to do with the work of your hands. This has to do with your with your uh, commitment to, to, to not be lazy and slothful. So it seems if he's saying two contradictory things, but the context of one has to do with weakness and false and messing up, help the brother out, help the sister out. Verse five has to do with don't be lazy, prove your own work, examine your own work. Don't, 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 don't promote yourself bigger than you are. Mm -hmm. Are, are y'all with me? Somebody say amen. Okay, verse six, verse six. Let him that is taught in the word Communicate unto him that teacheth all good things. This, here, Paul now, switching some uh, context again, here he's saying, those of you that are taught the word of God, the word of God is so important. And having someone teach you the word of God is so important that when someone teaches you the word, you are to communicate to them good things. Relax, I'm not taking an offering. I'm simply trying to say that Paul understands the, the value of the word of God. And, and I, I know right now, um, as they say, preaching to the choir, because everybody on this call, you, you wouldn't be here on a Wednesday night if you didn't understand the value of God's word. Wisdom Wednesday is, a, is for people who understand the value of being taught the word of God. The value, yes, I've read it, but I need somebody who's anointed to teach it. Yes, I know it, but I need somebody who's gifted by God to teach it and to break it down so I can understand it. Because just to have it is not enough. Just to read it is not enough. I have to understand it so I can apply it. And Paul says, he says to the Galatians, let him that is taught, those of you that are taught the word, the, the, the unadulterated word of God, the eternal word of God, the powerful, miracle-working word of God. Those of you that are taught are to communicate to the person who's teaching you in all good things. In other words, you are receiving the word and you're giving out to the person at, to, to acknowledge, I value the word that's in you. One of the things I love, mm, whew, I love when I, when I go to Africa. Those of you that have not been with me to Africa yet, uh, relax, I'm getting ready to, to plan a trip soon. But what I love about Africa, those of us that have been to Africa, the, the premium that Africans put on the word of God, Americans cannot understand it. Can't understand it. Because to them, the, 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 the preacher, the teacher, is the carrier of the most precious thing that there is, the word of God, which makes a difference in our lives. The word of God, which teaches us 
about God, who God is, what God wants, what God can do. And so there is an appreci appreciation for the word of God that is amazing. And, and, and Paul had it and taught it to them in the East. And, and it's a concept in the East. The Western church doesn't really grab it. We, we, we think we do cognitively, but the idea that the, the word of God and the person that teaches you the word of God is, is a gift to you from God, explaining God's word and breaking it down so that you get it. So if, if you get it, then you can apply it. If you don't get it, you can't apply it. Many of us have been to in services and in, in, in classes where, where somebody taught something and you were confused because the purpose of the word of God is and the teaching of the word of God is not to confuse you. It is to enable you to grasp it and to understand it. And then verse seven, I'm getting ready to close on this because we're still talking about don't, don't, don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Verse seven of Galatians 6, every, everyone who's been saved any month of time knows it. It says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Oh my goodness. He is saying, don't be deceived. You, can, you can't just get, get, get and not give. When you get, get, get and don't give, you're trying to mock God because it's God's word that's being given to you. He says, don't be deceived. God is that God cannot be mocked. Whatever you sow, that you shall also reap. And now again, again, I'm telling you, I know I'm preaching to the choir because those of you that are on this call, you are the people that are committed to the word of God, to getting it, to applying it, to living it. Uh, and, and it's critical that you understand that, that, that as, as you do that, it stops you from being deceived. It stops you from being distracted. One of the things I love about the word of God is that it helps you stay, here's that word again, I talked about it in the beginning, focused. It helps you stay focused. I have found, I have found, that there have been times in my life where, where things are going on and sometimes there's so many voices in your head and you're being pulled in many directions. I have found that at those times, when I open my word, whether it's, it's, it's the, the, the actual uh, paper Bible or, or, or the Bible on the device, I have found in times when, 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 when there's a cacophony in, in my head or, or in my space, that the word of God refocuses me. Mm. The word of God, in, 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 in spite of the conflagration going on in my life, or the, I, I remember years ago, years ago, when, when I was trusting the Lord for something, this is about 20 years ago, I was trusting the Lord, and, and I remember um, I, I couldn't hear I thought I was trying to hear from God to make some decisions. And, and he led me to the word. And the y'all have experienced it. I opened up the Bible to read, and it was as if it was exactly what I needed. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about? It was exactly what I needed. Because the word of God keeps us from being derailed. The word of God keeps us from being deceived. The word of God keeps us from, 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 bouncing off the walls. <laughs> All of us have had some things that happen that make you want to bounce off the wall, make you want to put on that white padded jacket and go to that padded room and just bounce off the wall and scream. But God's word, the amazing truth of God's word, the amazing hope that God's word gives. The amazing fact that when you don't know what to do, if you open up your word, oh God, I hear you. Some, some of you listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I know you've read the Bible through and through. I know you do. We, we, those, of, those of us, again, I'm preaching to the choir, but I want you to don't ever forget that when you don't know what to do, like Jehoshaphat said, our eyes are on you. 
he didn't he didn't have the the, the 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 whole Bible the way we do, but we have the Bible. Open up the Bible. That's how you put your eyes on Jesus. Open up the word. And if you do that, you cannot be derailed. You cannot be distracted. You cannot be destroyed. You cannot be deceived. Okay, so so the, the idea is that 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 you need to know that because the word of God will lead you. And and finally, he says, For he that soweth to this flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. The fact of the matter is, what you sow into brings you a certain harvest. If you sow into fleshly things or earthly things or common things, that's what you're going to reap. And, and the Bible calls that corruption because it's going to, it's going to, it's going to turn moth and, 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 and fleas will, will destroy it. But if you sow into the things of the spirit, you reap life everlasting. I want to remind you, do not allow anything to distract you from what God has for you. And then finally in verse number nine, we all know it. If you've been in church any length of time, I'm sure everybody on this call knows Galatians 6, 9. And let us be not wary in doing, in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, we are going to reap. Listen to me. Look at me. Lean in and listen. You are going to reap. For everything you have sown, you are going to reap. The word of God is clear. He's not fudging it. He's not kind of hemming and hawing. He's not, no, no, no. He says, let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season. And I want to prophesy over somebody right now, you're stepping in to your due season. You don't have to wait till July. You don't have to wait till August. I'm telling you that God told me to release it to somebody. You are stepping in to your due season. And if you have, because you have not been weary, you, you, you wanted to quit, but you didn't. You felt like quitting, but you didn't. Life hurt for a while, but you didn't. Be not weary in well-doing. Listen, you are about to step into your due season and reaping is coming. Somebody look up and say, thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reaping is coming. It's going to come if you faint not. Don't faint right before your reward. Don't faint. And so I want to challenge you tonight. My Lord, I feel God. Ooh, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, I've given them your word. I've given them what you put in my spirit. I have I've exhausted myself in the teaching of the word because I want them to get it, to understand that, that this word, this precious word, this precious word is what keeps us from being derailed and distracted, from being destroyed and deceived. Mm. I pray, oh God, that the word that has been shared tonight shall sink deep into the spirits of your people that we might be reminded that we cannot become weary. We cannot become distracted. We cannot sow into the wrong thing, but that Lord, you have a due season for us. And I prophetically sense my Lord, that for those who have made the sacrifice to be on this call tonight, to tune in to what you had to say through their pastor, the Lord was stepping into a due season. I speak a due season over your life. Mm. I speak a due season over your mind. I speak a due season over the things that pertain to you. I speak a due season that God is going to cause you to reap mm. a mighty harvest. God's going to cause you to reap a mighty harvest. I decree it. I release it in the name of Jesus. And for those, Lord, who is not their due season yet, thank you that we will not become weary. We will hold on because we know that you are more faithful to us than we can be to you. And I release that now in the name of Jesus. 
Amen, amen, amen. Put your hands together. Give God some praise. Woo. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. We will not be distracted. We will not be, you will not be distracted. I'm speaking directly to you as your pastor. You will not be distracted. You're going to remain focused. You're going to sow into the right things and you're going to reap a great harvest because God is on your side. And God is with you. And we rejoice together. I rejoice. I rejoice. I'm excited for the testimonies that are coming. I rejoice because I'm I'm looking forward to y'all uh, pulling me over on Sunday and saying, Bishop, let me tell you what happened. La last week, last week, last week, yes, last week, uh, I was speaking to a member who had a, a, fi a financial crisis, and 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 and. Uh, um, they, they called me and I started praying and I prayed a release for them and they, they could not see how it could happen. They could not see how and don't ask me who I ain't telling you. It's none of your business. Just like if it was you, you wouldn't want me to tell people either. So, but, but they called and, 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 and they were, I, I sensed in my spirit that, that, that they were in a bad place. And so they, 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 we, we started praying and they were like, Bishop, I don't know. I don't know where it's gonna come from. I know that it, it, I, I need. I need a breakthrough by Friday. I need a breakthrough by Friday. And 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 can, can I be honest with you? Uh, I, I I felt so bad for them. I thought to myself, well, maybe maybe Curtis, you 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 should do something to help them. And the Lord told me no. The Lord said no. I'm gonna do it. I don't want them to think that because they spoke to you, you said. He said, don't do it. He said, I I, I understand your heart, but don't do it. I want them to know that I am able to do it. Friday, I got the I got I got the call back. Bishop, you're not gonna believe what the Lord has done. And I started to rejoice with them because God is faithful. God is faithful. And they needed quite a few thousand dollars. They needed some money because of what was going on. And the Lord made a way out of no way for them because God is going to make sure in your due season you shall reap if you faint not. So my brothers and my sisters, listen, hold on to this word. Let it, let it percolate in your spirit. Go to bed tonight thinking about this. If you have a few minutes, read again through Galatians chapter 6. Just read through. It'll take you, it'll take you three minutes. It'll take you three minutes to read through Galatians chapter six. Right, somebody wrote, he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. He may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. He's done it for me many times. And he's done it for you too. Anyway, I'm gonna let us go. Whew. The Lord be with you. Listen, make sure you pay your tithes and your offering. Those of you to pay on Wednesday, if you're not paying your tithes and you wanna leave an offering, Please go to the link uh, to sow a seed uh, for our Wisdom Wednesday. I look forward to, to, to seeing you on Sunday. Remember on Sunday, um, we're having a Queen's Power meeting after the service. I want all of you that live in Queens, I want you to be there. All of you that live in Queens, it's going to be 15, 20 minutes. It's, it's for you. It's for your good. And, or call, call your neighbors. Bring your neighbors in. Because whatever problems you're having, we're trying to identify them so we can attack them as a unified body. Some things you can't do individually, but we can attack some things as a unified body. You know the issues on your block. You know the issues in your area. Come, uh, our Hanif Parker will be here. He's our representative, and we'll talk and we'll be able to pull things together. Uh, if, you, if you need any more information, talk to Deaconess Mildy or talk to Minister Suzanne Sobers, and, and, and let's meet after service because I want us to come together as a mighty body. Like, you know, the hand by itself can't do it, but if you become a fist, we can get stuff done. Amen, amen, amen. And come on back on Sunday. I got I, I got a word. I want to get back to the word that we started on, on Sunday. I didn't get to, to much of it, but the Lord, the Lord came through. The Lord came through. Amen.
Pastor Manning, I know you're on the line. Am I forgetting anything? Anything else I need to talk about? No, sir. I think you've covered it all. Okay. All right. Well, blessings to you all. Um, go, go in the strength of the Lord. Go knowing that the Lord is with you. And for the rest of the week, remain steadfast, unmovable, always abounding, knowing that your labor is not in vain. In vain. And your due season is here. <laughs> I can't get rid of that. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for your people and I release them in the blessing of the Lord. I decree over them that the word shall take root. I decree over them that their due season is here. And I decree over them that we are going to rejoice together because we know that you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Bless your people in Jesus' name. Now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. That is the precious name of Jesus. Amen.